Hello. Um, this is the last lecture of our series on physics informed machine learning. And in this lecture, we're going to look at a different case study on adhesive bonding. And we're going to look at the difference physics informed machine learning to, to predict the failure of adhesively bonded components. So uh, everyday objects around us, there are adhesive, adhesively bonded components in your laptop, in your cell phone, and your watch, in your electric car, in an aircraft. Uh, and as a result, it becomes quite a sensitive design um, components. We have to do a lot of study. We have to um, do experiments to understand the strength as a function of different parameters. Um, in, in this case, in this case of studies, we have taken a data set published by FAA on a specific adhesives called MGS-A100-B100. Um, they have provided 23 experimental data uh, based on different conditions following ASTM D5656 uh, to do shear tests on these adhesively bonded um, substrate, in this case, metallic substrate. And the data is provided. So I'm going to explain to you what is the data set. And I'm going to explain to you the techniques, in this case, the Gaussian process regression we're going to use to predict it without enforcing the physics and then with a physics-informed approach. Um, so FAA has conducted tests in, um, with different environmental conditions. And these are temperature conditions and humidity conditions where the samples are taken to equilibrium under those conditions and then tested under those conditions. Um, and then out for each of these tests or conditions, multiple tests have been done as a repeat. Um, so we are capturing the, the variability of tests with each condition. So what are these conditions? Cold temperature dry, uh, minus 65 F, 0% relative humidity. Room temperature dry, 70%, uh, 70 F, um, and 0% humidity. Elevated temperature dry, 160 um, degree Fahrenheit, 0% relative humidity. Elevated temperature wet um, at 160 F and 85% relative humidity. And then we are repeating elevated temperature dry and elevated temperature wet at 200 degree F. For each of these tests, when you do a shear test, and, I mean tensile test, which the load is being transferred um, to, to shear, uh, we are looking at the shear stress strain curve, um, and you can see the difference between these different um, conditions. And um, we are looking at the maximum strength value reported. In this case, the, the units are in PSI, um, so between 0 to 7,000, 8,000 PSIs have been reported. One more thing which is reported here, which is important for this study, is a temperature, if you're not familiar, a temperature is reported called glass transient temperature, or TG. Um, Basically, for every polymer, there is a specific temperature. If you heat up and get too close to that temperature, the, the, the polymer starts becoming softer and becomes rubbery. Um, so this glass transient temperature is important because we don't want to get too close um, to that temperature, go too much higher than that temperature. Um, so they have concluded that at a dry condition and wet condition, you have different um, glass transient temperature, TG, 175F and... Uh, 135F. So with this, let's go through um, the case study. Uh, a CSV file has been provided for you, um, 22, 23 columns. Um, the sample number, which is given at the FAA documents, and then we are dividing it either into test or training. I'm going to talk about it um, in a bit. But what is important for us is the relative humidity and um, the temperature of the test. And we are trying to predict the strengths as a function of relative humidity and temperature. But again, there are repeats of each condition. You can see like the first condition, there are five repeats, all zero degree, zero percent relative humidity and minus 65 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so there's adhesive.csv file which is provided for this study. Um, we are going to do this exercise first, which is um, traditional machine learning without enforcing any physics. We're going to use um, Gaussian process regression or GPR, which I explained in previous um, sections and we went over the, the mathematics of that. But basically for a given um, small data sets, we're gonna come up with a probabilistic zone to predict the strengths uh, as a function of relative humidity and temperature in the areas that we don't have these conditions. Um, and then we're gonna set four of these conditions as training data and two of these conditions as test data. And I have set it in a way 
to, to make it more difficult for machine learning and purpose. So the, the two conditions that are test state are more extreme. Uh, one of them is very cold temperature, the other one is very high temperature. Uh, the one which is cold is 0% humidity, the one which is hot is 85% humidity. So I've set it in a way at the edges of, of our domain. So Gaussian parcel regression, the code has been provided for you again, and I'm going to explain it um, slightly. We are using the scikit-learn library um, to import the Gaussian parcel regression regressor. Uh, you are um, importing the CSV file, the adhesive the CSV file into Pandas framework. Um, you're creating your X and Y values. You're creating your test and training data sets. Um, and then you're scaling the data um, and preparing it for training. So these are all um, standard ways of bringing the data, calling the libraries, bringing the data, um, and scaling the data, preparing it for training. I mentioned at the beginning um, at the lecture series that um, one of the most important things for Gaussian process regression is the choice of kernel. Since we don't know what is the choice of kernel, we're going to go through a library of the kernel. So um, a kernel library is defined at the beginning, and we go through a loop that these kernels are called one by one. We are fitting the Gaussian process regression model. We are checking the training and test the score, and we are adding into the list. And then at the end, we rank them and we report them. But in addition to rank and reporting, we are using the trained model at the end for predictions, um, not just predict the mean response, but the 5% and 95% confidence intervals as well. And then everything is plotted at the end once it's uh, ranked. Um, so the table that you have are the choice of kernels. Um, the mean squared, root mean squared error for test and for training. And then the, the printed, the 3D printed, uh, sorry, the, um, the 3D um, area that is printed, you have a mean surface, which is the color surface, and then you have the upper bound, lower bound, which is a 5%, 95% prediction for the confidence interval. And the pink points here are the training data, and the blue points at the end part are the test data we wanted to predict. So as you can see, the, all the models do a very relatively good job in doing the training. So you can see the dot um, squared plus noise kernel does a very good job uh, of capturing the, the training data. But then all of the models are quite bad in um, test data. Um, if you look at the first one, is this a good model? Um, think about it that we are predicting. Um, these are for the blue curves. You can see that it's significantly overestimate the strengths, um, especially at low temperatures. Um, we are predicting something which is, let's say, 7,000, 6,000 PSI, and we have um, almost 1,500 PSI errors. It's an extremely high error, and it's an error in a bad direction because we are overestimating the strengths of adhesive, which means that this exercise is quite dangerous because uh, you are creating the machine learning model which is overconfident in uh, what the material can do when, in fact, it's not that strong. So this was the first approach, which is a um, traditional approach without involving any physics. Now let's bring physics into this. I mentioned that when you start um, heating up polymers, um, at some point they start becoming softer and softer when you, they hit a specific temperature called glass transition temperature, uh, which is a function of many parameters, including humidity. Uh, not only material becomes softer, it's a strength drop. You can think about it in like a high level uh, curve like this. If you plot a strength as a function of T minus Tg, so if T is less than Tg, the strength doesn't change. But if e t, t approaches Tg and goes beyond Tg, all of a sudden the strength drops significantly. And you can think of it as like a high level um, second order equation. It's like a, uh, has slopes and there's a transition zone. And again, this is very approximate, but um, it's a good intuition of um, how temperature affects strength. So it's all the effects of this. If you have adhesive and you are below glass transient temperature, strength should be high. If you're above glass transient temperature, strength should be low. The glass transient temperature, that specific temperature is reported in the FAA document for both a dry um, and wet condition, 0% relative humidity and 85% relative humidity. So this is what we do in this step. First, we introduce a new parameter, T minus Tg. For every column, 
we have is TG value. So we create T minus TG. And we know when it's negative, it means that the strength is high. When it's positive, it means that the strength is low. Um, so instead of T and relative humidity, we're going to use a single parameter for a strength prediction. And that's T minus TG. Not only that, we're going to, um, so that's the first thing we're going to do. And that's simply done by creating a new column in Pandas framework, which is T minus TG. And then we're going to create a new kernel. From the shape that I introduced here, we kind of know that this is like a second order polynomial. Uh, so we can enforce that understanding. And that is done by saying that I have a second order equation, which is x squared plus x plus constant type equation. So we enforce, we change the inputs. We go from two inputs to one input. And we enforce a known um, covariance kernel correlation. And we, do, we go through the same exercise in the adhesive Python file. You can do this by selecting the option for physics in for machine learning and run it to get this, so you get to this point. When you do this and plot the data, first of all, we go from 3D to 2D. Now, the x-axis is T minus TG, and the y-axis is the strength. Um, you can see the mean response. The same color represents, so in the middle, we have the training data. The two ends, we have the um, test data. And you can see that the, but the test data is now very close to the mean and falls almost entirely within that confidence zone. Um, and not only that, our test and trainer score have improved significantly. So we achieved a much higher robustness in our machine learning model um, extrapolation to well beyond the zone by enforcing kernel and transforming our features um, in a GPR type approach. This concludes um, all the lectures we had on physics informed machine learning. I'll do a very quick summary of what we learned in this course. Um, and hopefully, that becomes quite uh, effective in your other applications. We went over four case studies in this course heat transfer and solving it using neural network, traditional neural networks, and physics informed neural network. Um, Understanding chemical reactions using CINDY, identifying closed form equation that governs the chemical reactions. Um, 3D printing and uh, trying to predict the strengths of a 3D printed part using um, ensemble methods, methods, including bagging and boosting, um, using it without including physics and they by calculating a flow index using finite element and added as an input. And lastly, a case study on adhesive failure where um, we try to do the simulation um, using traditional Gaussian process regression by doing hyperparameter optimization. And the next approach, we implemented physics-informed features and physics-informed kernels to significantly improve the accuracy. And with that, I'm concluding this course. And I hope that you have enjoyed and learned um, many different techniques from this course. And you can apply it to your own problems in the future.